creating a momentary surge of high pressure in the pump. The pressure wave forces open the store valve and some of the water flows into the pressure tank to relieve the built-up pressure wave. Then the store valve closes again. As it does so, a small reflected pressure wave travels back up the pipe, causing a momentary negative pressure zone in the pump. At this moment, there's nothing to hold the drive valve closed and it opens again under its own weight. Water immediately begins to escape. Velocity builds up in the drive pipe and the cycle starts all over again. Every time the drive valve snaps shut, the drive pipe acts like a battering ram, forcing some water into the high pressure tank. The drive valve is the only adjustable item on the pump. You can alter its stroke very simply by releasing the lock nuts. Lengthening the stroke will make the pump cycle more slowly. This increases both the amount of water pumped and the amount of water used to drive the pump. Shortening the stroke has the opposite effect. Notice that the pressure tank is only partially filled with water. There's a cushion of air above the water level at all times to act as a shock absorber and a reservoir of pressure energy. To maintain that air cushion, there's a breather vent, a small orifice just beneath the store valve. A small gulp of air enters the vent at each negative pressure cycle just after the store valve closes. The entrapped air stays there until the next pressure cycle when it passes into the tank with the rush of water. The vent can't become blocked. It's kept clear by the short burst of high pressure water which escapes through it at each pressure cycle. A Williamson ram pump isn't the only way of pumping water, but it does offer some unbeatable advantages. The most obvious one is running costs.